Good morning, everyone. It is December 15th, 2020. We will call the Wright County Board of Commissioners meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Welcome everyone who's um, with us here in the boardroom and also those joining us remotely. We have two commissioners remote this morning and three of us in house. All right. Well, the first official order of business, the minutes. That would be from um, December 1st. Uh, they're both from December uh, no, 1st. Yeah. I'm sorry. We both two both sets. of them are. Both yep. them are. Can we do these? Cut them one at a time. One at a time? Yeah. Or I'll make a motion to approve the regular board minutes of uh, December 1st. All right. Motion made by Commissioner Delighton. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Potter. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Burrell. Burrell votes aye. Commissioner Vett. Vetch votes aye. Commissioner Delighton. Aye. 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 All right. The minutes are approved. All right, the county board minutes from um, the certified levy 2021 budget and 2021 certified levy. Motion to approve. All right, motion made by Commissioner Potter. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second. Commissioner Leiden. any discussion on that? All right, hearing none, all in favor? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Every once in a while, I just slip. Well, All right. Ralph, well, let's <laughs> aye. Next vote's aye. Commissioner Delight. Aye. 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 All right. The minutes are approved. Um, review and approval of the agenda. Is there anything that anyone would, would like to add um, or change? Madam Chair. Commissioner Burrell. Madam Chair. Yes. Um, yes, I did have. I did have a real quick item that I'd like to add to today's agenda. It's just some, a, dis, a, a quick um, deal on, on Ordinance 20-1. All right. So if we can add that somewhere. Um, we have pages and pages of... Uh... All right. We'll add that under items for consideration. G. Okay. Anything else? That anyone if, has? if there's no other changes, Madam Chair, we'll make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. All right. No second. Motion made by Commissioner Burrell, seconded by Commissioner Delighton. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Burrell. Burrell votes aye. Commissioner Next vote aye. 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 All right. The agenda is approved. Consent agenda. Is there anything that anyone would like to remove for further discussion? I'll make a motion. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to approve today's consent agenda. All right. Motion made by Commissioner Vetch. I'll second it. Seconded by Commissioner Delighton. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Burrell. Burrell votes aye. Vetch votes aye. 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 All right. The consent agenda is approved. Now moving on to our timed items, and we have a special person in. in house. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Attorney Tom Kelly. Well, first, I'd like to thank Commissioners Mike Potter and Charlie Burrell for their service. Commissioners are elected to make tough decisions. Both of you did. Both of you were good for the county and our citizens. Again, thank you for all you have done. I wish both of you all the best as you move on to your next endeavor. I am not going to use my time to rehash everything I have done. If you had a chance to read my retirement letter, you know that I have kept myself busy for all these years. Rather, I want to make some observations and give thanks. I want to thank all veterans for making everything we do possible. I've been with the county attorney's office representing the citizens of Wright County for almost 37 years, the past 22 as your elected county attorney. It has been an honor and a privilege to serve the citizens of Wright County for all these years. I have truly enjoyed my years with the county. 
I started my career as a prosecutor for Wright County in March 1984 when Bill McPhail, county attorney, hired me as the fourth assistant attorney. Brian Osselson was already in the office. We had three secretaries, Joanne Blanche, Cindy Hull, and Linda Dixon. We had a total of eight employees, no victim witness and no paralegal. We now have 29 employees. I have hired 24 of them. Over the years, I've been a pretty good judge of people. I'm proud of the fact that my office has over 500 years of continuous service for the county. My philosophy was to hire the best people possible and stay out of their way and let them do their job. It helps them with taking ownership and self-worth. In 1990, Wyman Nelson, county attorney, made me chief of criminal division. My first act as chief was to meet with all of Wright County law enforcement because I wanted to stress the team approach to prosecution. The team approach requires a working relationship between the county attorney's office and law enforcement that instills credibility, confidence, cooperation, communication, and teamwork. It was necessary since law enforcement lays the foundation for every successful prosecution. To be on the same page, I started a training program for law enforcement where I and my office would instruct on criminal law and procedure. I am proud of the working relationship between my office and law enforcement for all these years. I'm both thankful and grateful for all their support over the years. In my career, I've worked with five sheriffs, Woof, Ozempa, Miller, Haggerty, and now Derringer. I have also worked with a number of police chiefs for Annandale, Buffalo, and Howard Lake. These facts alone lets me know I've been around for a long time. I want to thank Mike McMillan and his court services probation department for the team approach and the working relationship that existed between our departments as we worked our way through the criminal justice system. I want to thank the judges for the working relationship that existed with my office all these years. Also thank them for the mentorship they provided to myself and my office. We have been lucky here in Wright County with good judges who were good people. I want to thank the Public Defender's Office for the working relationship that existed with my office for all these years. We could not have kept our large caseload moving forward without this relationship. When Wyman Nelson retired, I was asked by law enforcement to run for county attorney. I didn't much care about eating ice cream and kissing babies, but I thought, <laughs> what the heck? In the fall of 1998, I and Bill McPhail made it through the primary election, so I had to run against Bill, who had hired me. That was kind of different, but we both ran respectful campaigns. With the support of law enforcement, I was elected with 74% of the vote. It was an honor to have been elected. I also stressed the importance of the team approach within my civil department and the need to work with the county board and other departments as they carry out their duties and responsibilities. My office had a good working relationship with the board and other departments, and we were responsive in a timely fashion for civil matters. I want to thank the board and all departments for their working relationship that existed here in Wright County. I had a great support staff, legal administrative assistants, and assistant county attorneys who worked hard at representing my office and the citizens of Wright County. I'd like to thank all my employees for their dedicated service over all these years. I was blessed with wonderful and hardworking employees. My employees had a positive impact on Wright County government and our citizens. I'm very proud of that. I wish you all well. I'd like to specifically note Jenny Popovich and Anna Rogers, who run my victim witness program. It is important not to lose sight of the victims within our criminal justice system. Working with crime victims all day, every day, is no easy task. They do a great job. My office would not have been what it was without my office manager, Cindy Hull, my chief deputy, Brian Osselson, and my chief of criminal division, Brian Lutz. I'd like to start with Brian Osselson. I knew when I was elected that running the county attorney's office would require a two-headed dragon. I needed someone I could depend on and trust to run the civil side of my office. My first act after being elected was to make Brian Osselson 
my chief deputy, and to put him in charge of the civil division. Brian has been everything I expected and more. His attitude, academics, values, common sense, humility, and work ethic has been exceptional. I think the world of him. I thank you, Brian, for your leadership. I thank you for your outstanding job you have done as my chief deputy. You have represented my office and the board and all other departments extremely well. I wish you the best. Next, I'd like to address Brian Lutz. In Webster's New Dictionary, under prosecutor, it says, see Brian Lutz. <laughs> <laughs> I knew when I hired Brian in March of 2020, or in March of 2000, I had a good one. In October 2010, I made him my chief of criminal division. He was a loyal team player I could depend on and trust to run my criminal division. His work ethic, attitude, common sense, values, professionalism, and leadership are all attributes that have made him the person and the prosecutor he is today. He is well respected by judges, law enforcement, and all others. Brian, thank you for everything. You did an excellent job representing my office and the citizens of Wright County. I am so grateful that the board agreed with my recommendation to have you be appointed county attorney to serve out my term. I have no doubt you'll do an outstanding job. I have no doubt you'll keep the team approach moving forward with everything that needs to be done. I wish you well. Next, I'd like to address Cindy Hole. Like Dorothy said to the Scarecrow and the Wizard of Oz, I think I'll miss Cindy the most of all. <laughs> I've only had two wives, my real wife Holly for 40 years and my work wife Cindy for almost 37 years. <laughs> I learned a long time ago, you have to keep both of them happy. <laughs> Cindy was my secretary before being my office manager. She is humble, down to earth, genuine, possesses common sense, great people skills, and was someone I could depend upon and trust. I could always confide in her. As my office manager, she did it all, including supervising 10 legal administrative assistants. Words cannot adequately express what you have meant to me, what you have done for me, and my office for all these years. Thank you. Lastly, but most importantly, I'd like to thank my family, Holly, Megan, and Matt, for all their love, patience, and support throughout the years. General Douglas MacArthur once stated, old soldiers never die, they simply fade away. After almost 37 years, it is time I fade away. It has been one hell of a ride, and I've enjoyed it immensely. Again, I want to thank Wright County and its citizens for all their support over the years and for making it all possible. I will forever be grateful. Now I'll take my number two lead pencil and go home. Take care, God bless, and catch you on the flip side. <laughs> Speech, speech, speech. Uh, Madam Chair. <laughs> that was Madam Oh, okay. Well, Tom, we're really sincerely going to miss you, but you know, we know that you've you've made a great recommendation, Brian, and I've known you for a lot of years. I knew uh, your predecessors also, Wyman Nelson and Bill McPhail, and I think you you have accomplished amazing things in your office. As you said, your team approach um, has led to just a real cohesive office. I mean, that your work ethic in your, in your employees and you know, the fact that you can keep Cindy for 37 years, I mean, man, that's <laughs> saying a lot, right? <laughs> and I, I've you know, just appreciated your wit and your dedication and, and your, you know, we all laugh when you say the number, you know, two lead pencil, <laughs> we, can, we can't help it. <laughs> but also, you know, the committees that that I've served on with you and 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 uh, listening listening to your your comments and you know you're you really are you're really dedicated. I think we serve on about four things together: safe schools and safe communities at Wright County, um, mentorship, education, and drug awareness, and um, law library. So, yeah, I it. really gonna miss you a lot. So. And Charlie, you have your hand up. 
Um, Madam Chair, yes, thank you. I said that the first time I, I met uh, our county attorney was when I asked him to come. I was Waverly Legion commander, and I asked to come down to do our address at our Memorial Day service. And Tom spoke about his uncle's service in the military, and he's very proud of them. And I just want to thank him for his commitment to our military and our veterans this entire time. He's always been an advocate for them. So thank you, Tom. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. All thanks, right. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. Appreciate it, everything you have done. Absolutely, um, Mark. Appreciate it. Yeah, sure. It's been great knowing you. I've enjoyed your words of wisdom and your wit, <laughs> your humor. And your number two pencil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, Madam Chair. Commissioner Potter. Thank you, Madam Chair. Tom, it's been a pleasure working with you the last eight years. We have a lot of times going up to your office, talk about different things, and especially, uh, you know, your team has been fantastic up there to start with. And the thing is, uh, helping me with that Justice Center, to all the little nuances going through. And I do uh, appreciate how you uh, work through my vision of that for the 20 year not we're not building this for today we're building it for 20 years and the thought that went into what do i anticipate i need for the next 20 years and i think you you, you hit the bullseye on what you thought you needed and, and some people question do you need that we said well we're not talking about today we're talking about 20 years from now mm -hmm. and, and if we end up with two extra offices in that division that's a bullseye to me if we're six short we messed up sure, <clears> you know i think <clears throat> don't want to do that for 20 years you know and, and I do appreciate that and like say we had all the all the team members got a bite at the apple so they all got to participate in this and I, I do like that approach of doing things mm -hmm. and that's a building we can all be proud of and that's like the swan song for you leaving here look what left right county in a better shape now and I never did put a nail on the wall for Mr. Luce's new office <laughs> 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 oh. yeah. thank you yeah thank you all right. Well, Derek, Derek, you have your hand up. Just real quick, I was just going to say, uh, Tom, you will be missed, and I wish you the best in your next adventures in life. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Derek. All right. Fisher bite on Red Lake. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys all take care. Like I said, it's been a hell of a ride, and I've enjoyed yeah. working with all of yeah. uh, you. Thank you. Like, likewise. Thank right. you so much, Tom. All right, um, moving on, we've got two uh, exciting, uh, you know, we've got new people that we'd like to bring forward and Assistant Administrator Sue uh, Regine. Well, as we uh, say goodbye to a, a long term here, um, we're going to actually welcome a few new ones to our um, staff. So good, mad good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Administration is very excited to introduce to you our two new staff members um, that have joined our team. Over the past few months, administration has looked at ways to realign our staff based on our needs. I feel that these two new staff members will complement our current staff and make our team stronger and successful in meeting the ne needs of the county. And with that, I will introduce them <coughs> one by one. The first one is Elizabeth Clough. She is our new office manager for administration. She was born and raised in Quincy, Illinois, recently relocated here to be closer to her boyfriend. That was a plus for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, she graduated from Quincy University with a master's in business administration in previously um, in the HR and previously was the HR director for the city of Quincy. So. Hi, um, I'm very excited about this opportunity to continue my career within local government, and I look forward to working with everyone. Why don't you come around to the to over here so that they can the, see the two commissioners at home can see all you? All the way around. Oh. Yeah, all the way around. <laughs> Speak you, into the you, little white eyeball. Yeah, oh. no. Yeah. <laughs> so they're on the computer there. That's a speaker. Say hi. <laughs> Is that what you want? Please. Well, welcome aboard. Yeah, welcome. So, where do you live? Where are you living now? Uh, currently, in my boyfriend's parents' basement, um, but we actually just purchased a house right in Buffalo. Oh, okay. Very, very soon. Awesome. Yeah. Well, welcome. Congratulations. Welcome. 
and now you're working in the right county. Mm -hmm. We were waiting. <laughs> and living. living. And living. Yeah. Life is going to be grand. <laughs> Okay, and then with that, we're going to introduce Angie Fisher. She is our new administration specialist joining us. Um, she is currently lives in Big Lake, and she came to us from the Elk River Police Department, where she was a receptionist and transcriptionist. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, she worked at a private law firm as an executive legal assistant. So we welcome Angie as well. Welcome. Welcome. Hi. I'm Hi. very excited to start in the right county and uh, meet everybody. Um, a little bit about me, um, my husband and I have lived in Big Lake for 15 years. I have an almost 15 year old who's taking her permit test on the 21st. Oh wow. So we're a little nervous about that. <laughs> and we've also learned through COVID that um, Uno is not a family friendly game because we are extremely competitive. So um, yeah, I'm excited to meet everybody. Oh yeah. Well. <laughs> Thank you. So did you grow up in Big Lake? Uh, Champlin. Champlin? Champlin, yeah. okay. Moved out into the country. Yeah. <laughs> so Gregory right. Champlin Park. Yep. Glad to have you aboard, Elizabeth and Angie. So did you have interactions with Charlie Schuweiler? No <laughs> Charlie Schuweiler? He was the, uh, uh, like the DARE officer, liaison officer in a school. Um, no. Uh, so you were a good girl then. <laughs> so you were a good girl then. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> All right. Welcome. Well, we welcome uh, Mr. Bob Hevela, our auditor treasurer. Hey, good morning, board. A uh, couple items here. Um, just as a reminder that all tobacco licenses that are renewals go on the consent agenda. So on today's agenda, I have a new license for uh, Ambema Retail out of South Haven. So all the appropriate signatures and fees have been paid, so I'm asking you to approve a tobacco license that covers part of December 2020 all the way through December 31st, 2021. I'll make a motion to approve the tobacco license. All right, motion made by Commissioner DeLayden. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Potter. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Burrell. Burrell votes aye. You got your votes aye. 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 All right. Tobacco license is approved. Thank and you, board. Uh, the next item on the agenda, um, just in case you didn't know, there was a big election this last year. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> it was uh, a lot of teamwork put together, not only by my staff, but also by temporary people who came in. Uh, we received a letter from one of our temporary people. It was Judge Mossy. Um, or Dale Mossy. Um, so in your packet was a letter that we received from him along with a hundred dollar appreciation um, gift. <clears throat> so I don't know if you want to read the letter or... Yeah, did you want, okay. do you want to read the letter, Bob? December 1st, 2020 to Bob. Uh, dear Bob, each year my wife, Carol, and I select one person or group of people to surprise with an annual award we call the Mossy Annual Above and Beyond Award. This year's recipient is the staff of your department. Here are the selection criteria. One, the winner must have done something ex exceptionally or exemplifies the commitment to others to a greater community. Two, the winner must have acted in a manner greater than anyone's reasonable expectations. Three, the winner must have exemplified leadership or carried out an assigned task in a manner that is truly exemplary. Four, the completed task must have had a great significant difference in the lives of others. With this award comes our gift of $100. The members of your department easily met all of our criteria in 2020 in connection with the election. A few of my impressions. A, no task was hurried through. Accuracy and completeness were Matt, watch words. B, normal quitting time was irrelevant, especially by the leadership. C, the rest of the staff exhibited loyalty and enthusiasm for its leaders. D, the staff were very knowledgeable about election law. E, the complaints were, uh, no complaints were ever heard. F, your department's election unit lived and breathed the motto, all votes count. There wasn't a whiff of, par uh, partisanship anywhere in the office. 
Gee, your staff obviously took pride in its performance and rightly so. You or your staff, if you choose, can use this uh, small gift in any way you deem. We're working with the attorney's office on appropriate use of it. Um, maybe the break room needs a new microwave or maybe lunch at the end of the workday. Uh, it's my pleasure to be part of the effort. I have taken a chance to tell everyone I speak of that they can rest assured that the vote counted and that the process was thorough, fair, and conducted with great diligence, care, and concern. Um, yeah, it was very nice. <clears throat> that was very nice. I'll make a motion to approve resolution to accept the donation from Dale and Carol Mousey. All right. Motion made by Commissioner Delight. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Potter. Any discussion? I would just say, I mean, I really enjoyed uh, Dale Mossy when he was judge. He was um, always very kind and I thought uh, did a great job. So it's nice to see he's still kind of connected to the community. So Madam Chair, Commissioners, I just want to echo that uh, this is truly the work of the staff. Um, the staff, you know, no way do we anticipate the FC votes turning out the way they did. Right. And the way we incorporate that into our normal work schedules and perform the way we did, I mean, the kudos is off to my staff who handled this extremely well. I agree. It, it was, uh, they, they really did go above and beyond the call of duty. So. And I want to thank you guys. I mean, you allowed me to bring in some additional temporary people, and um, I believe that this is going to be the future, that no way are we going to have that many people here uh, as employees, we're going to call on people to come in and help with the process. Mm -hmm. I don't think the genie is going to go back in the bottle for absentee voting. I think people have seen that. It works well. Um, nobody's disenfranchised. So. Yep. Thank you. Any more discussion? Yes, Madam Chair. Commissioner Potter. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Just, Bob, again, a shout out to your staff. I mean, this, this was probably one of the most stressful elections around because of all the little nuances there, and they handled it fantastic you know and like again you just can't give enough credit because the integrity of this country is based on their election and they handled their end of the equation to a T perfectly thank, thank you. you thank you Commissioner Potter I mean we do get great <clears throat> directions from the Secretary of State uh, obviously this was an election that was scrutinized quite a bit mm -hmm. adhering to the procedures really helped ensure the integrity of to the voters and to our staff make sure that we know we're doing a good job so thank you all right yeah hats off to your team sure there's no more discussion uh roll call vote commissioner burrell burrell votes aye next vote aye 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 all right the resolution passes and we thank the mossies all right uh, board the, the third item is an item that i brought to you before mm -hmm. uh commissioner burrell asked us to just execute it one more time to make sure that there's we're not giving away land and stuff like that so we worked with planning and zoning uh, we feel rest assured that you know, this is really not a buildable piece of property so i'm coming to you uh, this is informational yeah. that fourteen thousand one hundred eighty five dollars is what it's going to take to tear down that building and get rid of it i'm sorry what was the number fourteen thousand one hundred eighty five and the Thank quote you. includes all everything that they're going to do oh. <clears throat> All right. Is it just the house or everything in the property? <clears throat> uh, the price includes the removal of any recycling, removal of and recycling of any items that are accepted by the Wright County Compost Facility, a dumpster with liners for any chance of asbestos, the septic system abandonment, well sealing, removal of all wooden structures, <laughs> buildings, materials, uh, fill soil if the level of site. That's a heck of a price. It, it really, it really <laughs> is. Yeah, it's, it's, That's a good price for that. It looks like quite the, quite the job. <laughs> so. The neighbors to the uh, west or north will be very appreciative if we get moving on this. So, yeah. Are they willing to buy the property? Uh, they have expressed interest, but after it's demolished. All right. All right, is there a motion to authorize? So moved. Auditor. All right. I'll second it. All right, motion made by Commissioner Potter, seconded by Commissioner DeLayden um, for the demolition of this tax forfeited property. Is there any discussion? 
Um, Madam Chair, I just want to thank Bob and the planning and zoning staff for, for following up on this and making sure that we're doing the best thing that we can for the citizens of the county. Potter. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I would thank Commissioner Brown because now nobody in the future can say that we didn't go to the, the nth degree to make sure this wasn't a savable property. Right. We did everything possible, went through all the channels, and this was the best alternative, best outcome for this particular property. Yep. Yep. Thank you. I agree. Any more discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, Commissioner Burrell. Burrell votes aye. Vet votes aye. 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 All right. Motion passes. Thank you, Commissioners. Yeah. Uh, the last item I have, uh, have on the agenda is approval of the November budget report. Um, I handed out a summary or narrative for the commissioners here. Uh, Commissioner Brell, Commissioner Vetch, did you guys get an email copy of it? Yes. Okay. Uh, that might save me from having to read it, but bas basically, there's really nothing for me to draw your attention to. Last month, we left off with an open item of the court appointed counsel and court admin. I did follow up with Monica. Um, there was not a slowdown in that area. Um, then we went back and looked at the previous years, and that line item has bounced all over the place. Uh, at one year, we had 276,000. Uh, the next year, we had 270. Then we went down to 218. So we kind of followed that budget and setting it, but there's no perfect number there. It is based on whatever court cases come through. Mm -hmm. She said the, uh, the chips and the commitments uh, where they have to have this, these court appointed councils, that's where this is really driven. So board, it, it is just an estimate when we set the budget, it will go over budget. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, revenue expenditure and budget TIP report for November. All right. Burrell will second. By Commissioner Vetch, seconded by Commissioner Burrell. <clears throat> Is there any more discussion on this? Yeah, Madam Chair, Madam Chair. Commissioner Potter. Thank you, Madam Chair. As we all know, budgets are just a <laughs> guideline. And then once you expend it, then you get the actual because there's external forces that shape that. So we just do the best we can with a budget and figure out from there where to go. And we make adjustments the subsequent years to make up for any <clears throat> shortfalls or changes that had come up. So. Uh, it's, and I applaud all departments for uh, being mindful of our budget in uh, different budgets and, and being uh, judicious with the money. I mean, people, the right county should be proud of the department heads, people here, that they are not just frivolously wasting money here. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> Madam Chair, maybe I should just point out one item. It's investment sure. income. Okay. A lot of our money has to be liquid due to the <clears throat> uh, operations of our, our business. Mm -hmm. And our <laughs> liquid money... You know, used to have significant <clears throat> interest rates. Those interest rates are, are cut drastically. Um, and that's why it's driving a lot of our interest rate, our interest income down. So yeah. again, we're gonna continue to monitor that. We're gonna structure, strategically look at that next year, so. All right. If there's no other discussion, roll call vote, Commissioner Burrell. Burrell votes aye. Bench votes aye. 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 All right. The revenue and expenditures are approved. All right, Mr. Greg Picard, our Veteran Services Officer. Welcome. Good morning, Board, Madam Chair. Uh, morning. <clears throat> uh, what I have before you this morning is that time again for the Veterans Operational Improvement Grant. Um, I included a couple extra documents this year because the state changed up the process a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Um, I think due to COVID um, and requiring electronic signatures for a lot. Um, so what I'm asking you to do is support, um, adopt a board resolution to appoint me as the administrator for the grant. What that will do is uh, we'll send that adopted resolution back to the state. They will produce the grant, the final grant for us, which matches the sample I sent you word for word. It's same conditions and everything. Nothing will change. It'll just have our information in it. Um, they'll send it back to me for electronic signature. And then I'll work in conjunction with Lee just to make sure that nothing's changed. They didn't slip anything in on us, which I'm sure they won't, but just as a check and balance. Um, and then we'll send that back to the state. The MDBA commissioner will sign it, and then we will get that final grant all signed and ready to go. And then it'll be live <clears throat> 60 days from the date the commissioner signs it. Okay. Wonderful. So that's $15,000. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's what it's been 
almost every year, hasn't it? Yeah, it's it's based on population, veteran population, estimated veteran population. So they they have it broken out by tier levels. We're kind of in that second tier. The base level is 7,500. The next level is 15, and then it goes up from there. Obviously, Hennepin has the most grant because they have the most veterans. But across the state, every county gets it as long as they have a CVSO appointed. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just where we fall out population-wise. We get to 15,000. Okay. All right. Wonderful. All right. I'll, I look for a motion for I'll a make a motion for uh, having uh, point Greg Picard as the CVSO. We're all we'll second. Okay, All right. Good. Motion made by Commissioner Delight and seconded by Commissioner Burrell. Any more discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, Commissioner Burrell. Burrell votes aye. Vetch votes aye. 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 All right. Resolution passes. Thank you, Greg, for all you do for our veterans. Yes, ma'am. You're, you're all welcome. <laughs> all right. Mr. Mark Matthijs, our Parks and Recreation Director. Good morning, Madam Chair. Morning. <clears throat> morning, members of the board. Um, that hat is really distracting. <laughs> <laughs> I try. Yeah, you do a good job. Good. Yeah. Uh, you, you want the, you want the lights faster? Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. Turn them up here. It takes my sensory to a do level. <laughs> um, a couple orders of business today. Uh, Park Commission made some recommendations to you. The minutes and minutes atta are attached. Um, they're recommending changes to the memorial policy. Um, in that, basically, we haven't upped our fees for quite a while. Product costs, stuff like that. Um, try to cover that plus a little more for maintenance. Holy cow! Uh, for maintenance reasons. Um, so we're up in the. They're recommending up in the fee to $250. Taking out the trees, over, since, uh, since the time we've done the memorial policy, which has been a number of years, we've had one tree uh, donated. The benches and tables are by far the most popular item. So mm -hmm. um, clean it up a little bit, taking the trees out, and then increasing the, uh, the fees, $250, um, to help cover the cost, and then just some minor cleanups on, uh, on the document itself that's attached to your document and then um, the second item is uh, we have we're down to the punch list on Bertram campground which will finish in the spring um, we just got done seating last week and with that we have uh, two new things in our system with the Bertram campground one is camper cabins which we've never had before and one is tandem sites so we actually have sites where Commissioner Potter and Commissioner Houston can come camping together, camp in the same sites, have hookups for both rigs, stuff like that. So um, they're, we're thinking they'll be popular. They're kind of kind of a new thing. Uh, we'll find out if the rest of the state follows suit on those types of sites or if we're just out in left field. So those fees that we're looking at um, for the camper cabins being recommended are, uh, with the small camper cabins, are $55 a night. $59 for non-residents and then the uh, large camper cabins would be $65 a night and 69 for non-residents and the tandem sites would be 48 per night for a resident and 52 for a non-resident our goal is to either open that campground uh, the week before 4th of July or the week after 4th of July see how the turf grass establishes here in this see what we get for spring weather and turf establishment I think those are very fair prices. I mean, those are really nice cabins out there, and the whole site is it turned out really well. So, I, yeah, I'm, I'm happy for, I'm happy for that of availability for our, our residents and gives them another another opportunity. Yes. Thanks. Well, I think once, Madam Chair. Yes. Once, once the um, Monticello's. Uh, Athletic fields get done. This campground, I think, will once we get back to our new normal, <laughs> once COVID's all done and the kids are able to play again, I think that campground will get really busy. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> even even before it gets real. <laughs> yeah. I think I think it'll be a sought out spot for sure. So thank you. I'll make a motion to 
Do I suppose we should do both of these? I think one is individual. One at a time. I'll make a motion to approve uh, changes to the Wright County Parks and Recreations Memorial Recognition Policy. All right. Motion made by Commissioner Lyden. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll second that, Madam Chair. You could talk without moving the mouth. <laughs> All right. Motion made by Commissioner Delight and seconded by Commissioner Burrell. Any discussion? All right. Hearing none, Commissioner Burrell. Burrell votes aye. Vetch votes aye. 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 All right. That is approved. No second. Madam one. Chair, I'll make a motion to set the fee schedules for the camper cabins and the tandem sites. All right. Motion made by Commissioner Vetch. Is there a second? I'll second it. Seconded by Commissioner Delighton. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Burrell. Burrell votes aye. Vetch votes aye. 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 All right. That is approved. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Moving on to not quite 943, but <laughs> Matt Detson, our egg and drainage. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Um, I have before you the approval to accept a quote from Ashwell Companies for tree removal on County Ditch 10. Um, if you can see the attachment that I, I sent you, those were all the bids that we received, and I broke them down in a table. Um, I definitely think we got a really good price on this, and I know the contractor, Kyle Ashwell, is excited to get started on this. So, Yeah, thank you. There was um, quite, a, quite a difference in the bids, wasn't there? So the yes, there was. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I'd be buying a lottery ticket if I was you. That's that's a really good price for for tree removal on that system for how large the trees are. Yeah. Um, you know, we we originally thought you know by bidding um, tree removal and seeding separately from the larger contractors that we would save somewhere around five hundred sixty five thousand dollars on the total project. Um, this is even lower than what that estimate was, so we're well on our way to, to save that much money. Yeah, it, I was I was a little surprised at at how much lower they were than the other the other bidders. So great, mm -hmm. great job. Where yeah. is? Yeah. Man, I'll, oh, I'll make a motion that we accept the Ashwell bid for a ditch ten tree removal. All right, motion made by Commissioner Burrell. Is there a second? I'll second it. Seconded by Commissioner Delayden. Any discussion on that? Yeah, Madam Chair. Yes. Um, Matt, did, did oh. Oh. Um, I was just going to say, I didn't know if I cut Matt off, if he had something else to say, you know, I'd hear. Oh, no, that's all I really had. So. All yeah. right. Madam Mr. Chair. Yeah, Mr. Delayden. Um, Matt, are we going to be doing almost the complete uh, county ditch 10 on this one with all the tree removal? Yeah, yeah, this is the true move is for the majority of the system. There's a, a couple spots where landowners requested not to have trees removed that we can work around and and some of those. But yeah, this is the bid for the whole 12 odd miles yeah, of know. ditch. So it's, it's really amazing. Is Asheville companies local or where are they out of? Okay, yeah, they are a local company. Oh, good. So. Yeah. I'm glad to hear yeah. that. Yeah. So, all right. Any more discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, Commissioner Burrell. Burrell votes aye. Commissioner Vetch. Vetch votes aye. 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 All right. <coughs> Our motion passes to accept that quote from Ashwell. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Um, we're kind of a little early here. <laughs> we're just there, see? So, but. Go ahead with Virgil, unless anyone was planning yes. to tune in to the... That's the guideline. We want to make yeah. sure we're there okay. for 10 o'clock. What? We want to make sure we're on time for 10 o'clock. Right. Okay. Why don't we go ahead, Virgil, if you're if you're ready to go? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready if you are. Okay. Well, good morning, Madam Chair and Board of Commissioners. Today, there's four items for highway for your consideration. Mm -hmm. um, the first item 
is to approve resolution and authorize final payment to Great Greystone Construction in the amount of $14,727.53 for our new salt shed at the Waverly Truck Station. Yeah, it, I, saw, I saw the picture though. It looks looks like it's a nice... Uh, that was long overdue. Yeah. Madam Chair, I'll make it that motion. It was overdue, yeah. All right, motion made by Commissioner. And then... Potter to accept. Uh, I'll second it. I'll second that. Authorize oh. final payment. Yeah, All right. Excuse me, Charlie. Motion made, or excuse me, seconded by Commissioner Burrell. Is there any discussion on this? Um, Madam Chair, I just want to thank Virgil for this. I know I've... I've received many complaints over the years about the old shed. It's just too small, and when it would rain, it would kind of dissolve some of the salt and come out. And even though we had a little collection pond, it just concerned people. I think it was the visibility. This is just going to be so much more wonderful. So thank you, Virgil. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, hey, you're welcome. All right. This is a resolution. So roll call vote. Commissioner Burrell. Bill votes aye. Match votes aye. 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 All right. Resolution passes 5 0. Yeah. I echo the thank you for that. Um, the second item. Second hey, thank you. Uh, the second item is to approve resolution of final acceptance for contract 1806 and authorize final payment to Fain Companies. And this was for our Highway 38 project in Otsego. And the amount of the final payment is $44,417.59. So moved. All right. Motion I'll second made it. Made by Commissioner Potter, second by Commissioner DeLayden. Madam Chair. Pass this resolution. Yes, Commissioner DeLayden. Virgil, is this for that section from 19 to, is it MacGyver, or this is the old, the other Odin, section? Odin to 101. Odin to yeah, 101. this is from Odin to 101. Okay. All right, we're just curious on on uh, on that. So, thank you. Yeah, and yeah, you're welcome. Commissioner Potter. Thank you, Madam Chair, and also want to let people know that they, uh, it turned out fantastic. I, I like how, you know, with all the things they had to work around there, some people were concerned about not only roundabout, but uh, all the other anomalies there. It turned out fantastic. It's a nice looking project. Thank yeah, you. it's nice to go fast on that road. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You didn't hear that, Deputy. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody heard it. No. <laughs> okay. All right. There's no more discussion. Uh, roll call vote. Commissioner Burrell. Um, Burrell will vote aye. Mark, I thought that was just your wife. Vets votes aye. <laughs> Clyde votes aye, and you're right, Charlie. <laughs> aye. Aye. <laughs> All right, resolution passes 5 0. Thank Although you. Although she speeds in town, <laughs> I do it outside of town. Ah. Okay, right. thank you. The, uh, the third item today is to approve resolution of final acceptance for contract 1901 and authorize final payment to Knife River in the amount of $64,138.34. And this is for our our 2019 overlay project, yeah. which was Highway 5, Highway 7, Highway 35, and Highway 39. So moved. I'll second. Maybe second. Oh. Potter, seconded by Commissioner Burrell. Is there any discussion on this? Other one looks good. Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Burrell. Well, vote's aye. Vets vote's aye. 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 All right, resolution passes 5 0. Okay, thank you. The uh, final item today for your consideration is to approve the Transportation Committee minutes of the whole from uh, Tuesday, December 1st. There were four items on that meeting's agenda. Number one was to review and approve updates to our five year plan. The second item was review and approve updates to our long range transportation plan. And the third item was to review our County Road 138 route change. And then the fourth item was a presentation by Hallie Turner, MnDOT Policy Planning Director, about the statewide multimodal transportation plan. So I'll just summarize the, the discussion. Uh, item one, review and approve our um, updated five-year plan. Um, Chad Hausman went through the plan and um, the consensus was to approve and adopt the 
plan that was presented, and this is an updated plan that goes from years 2021 to 2025. And then the second item was to review some minor changes to our long range transportation plan that was originally adopted September 2019. And Sarah went through the minor updates and changes and the consensus was to approve the updated LRTP. The third item, the County Road 138 route change was um, talked about that we originally had wanted to change County Road 138 to Casa 83 all the way from Trunk Highway 55 to Trunk Highway 25, but we were not able to because MnDOT wouldn't permit us to use the Casa 41 to take that Casa designation off 41. So for now, we're just going to make the change from Casa 12 to Trunk Highway 25. That's Casa 83 now, and we'll change the other segment in the future. And the last uh, item was uh, a nice presentation by Hallie Turner, and she just gave an update on the current uh, multimodal transportation plan that MnDOT's doing. They, they update, update that every few years. That's kind of a general summary, and the uh, minutes are in your packets. If you see any corrections that need made, uh, let me know. Yeah. Any, anyone have any uh Corrections or comments on the minutes? Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, Transportation Committee the whole minutes from December 1st. All right. Motion made by Commissioner Vetch. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Commissioner does that include? Uh, does that in include the recommendations to Eric? Absolutely. Everybody. The minutes? That's a, yes. Minutes, yes. Thank you for clarifying that. Minutes and the recommendations. Any discussion? Madam Chair. Mr. Potter. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to uh, thank Virgil, Chad, and staff for uh, with this this update, all the supporting documentation that goes with it, so people know what it was, what year, where the funding source is coming from, all that. Because you know you want that transparency. Now you've got it. You know where it's all coming from and, and what year, everything else. And that's that's good for people to see. Uh, those that insist upon having every last detail, uh, they should be not for wanting anything on this particular report. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Any more discussion? Uh, Madam Chair? Yes. Um, Virgil, regarding uh, County Road 35, um, especially towards the St. Michael, uh, are we going to reconstruct that area from um, Jameson into town um, in 23? Is that the goal right now? Yes. Okay, so will that be a four lane then, or how are you going to do that? I've, I've had some people complaining about that intersection. <clears throat> oh, just past uh, where the two where the two developments are on either side of of uh, thirty five. Pardon? Morgendahl. Morgendahl. Yes. Uh, about yeah. that intersection there, where they're they get nervous. Yeah, there's some uh, pardon some development. That St. Michael has some development too on the um, kind of the north and the west side across from 30th, I think. And um, so that's we're looking at that with the city right now. But our plan in 2023, we would we would reconstruct for expansion. So it would either be a three lane or with turn lanes or four lanes. We haven't scoped it out completely yet, but uh, it would be an expansion to accommodate capacity. So, yeah, with with everything that's going to be built down in Jamison, it'll definitely need to get expanded. So, if you went with four lanes, would you still have turn lanes, separate turn lanes then? We would have to scope that out to see what, what works best and uh, model it. Okay. All right. I, I was thinking it was 2025, but I can let people know it's 2023. That's what it is right right now in our plan, and that's, yeah, of yeah. course, subject yep. subject to local option sales tax being uh, perpetuated. Yep. I understand. All right. All right. Thank you, Virgil. All right. Thank you. There's no more discussion. Um, roll call vote. Commissioner Burrell? Burrell votes aye. Batch votes aye. 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 All right. The Transportation Committee, the whole minutes are approved. Thanks much, Virgil, for everything. Yeah, thank you.
All right, we've got um, about five minutes before our salaries really quick. Our, uh, either that or why don't we just do the, the committee minutes? If we can probably do the minutes. CARES committee minutes in about five minutes. Um, Mike, if you have those. You, you want me to do the workshop? Yeah, you wanted me to do I'm the CARES. Sorry. I'm sorry. So you can, it, that's all right. You can. Mike can do them both. I'm just trying <laughs> to. I'm trying well. to burn up some time here for you. <laughs> well, you can do cares in a, about four minutes. Um, oh, I bet you I can do it faster than that. <laughs> um, I can, the board met um, on the December second. I was remote. Otherwise. Um, Use some veg and potter were on site. Um, it was kind of uh, regarding the, the final act summary for the CARES Act. Um, we had gotten 16.57 million um, from the CARES Act, and 43% uh, of that was allocated to school districts, um, small businesses, nonprofits, and affiliates. Uh, the county board approved 4.2 million to be a earmark for school districts, and the actual amount expended was 4.27 million, um, which um, Commissioner Vetch had suggested this, and I think it was an outstanding suggestion. From my understanding, there were no other counties that did this sort of thing that we did. There's a few cities that did it for businesses, but we were the only county that did it for the school districts, from my understanding. Um, affiliates were um, uh, small business programs. We expended 2.42 million. Um, this is to help out those businesses that had um, had a uh, loss of income due to COVID, a lot of restaurants and stuff. Um, and then additional, uh, see, we originally, uh, affiliates were designated of $934,779, but that wasn't enough and we needed an additional 500,000, uh, was transferred. So the small businesses, um, again, was, uh, above the 2 million, which we originally allocated. Um, so there was a, a, a great need, a lot greater need than we actually anticipated. Uh, the township had turned over some of their allocations, which uh, we were able to utilize to help some of the people. Um, so the uh, county kept Seven million three hundred seventy-seven five forty-nine, which one for public safety payroll, and um, two two million sixty-seven eight twenty-two for health and human services for the public mm -hmm. health, um, and then some additional smaller amounts for some um, VPN, which is a virtual private network to help um, a lot of the. Uh, telecommuting expenses that we had to deal with. Um, the CARES Act Committee did have um, a great task in trying to recommend all sorts of different things, so they did a great job with that. Uh, second thing was the budget data reporting, and this was to uh, talk about some of the questions that came up with the annual budget certified levy, levy hearing, the truth and taxation regarding making sure that um, the approved preliminary budget is put out when it's approved in September so that residents can see that up front. Um, and again, all that information is available uh, on the county website and every week that the county has a board meeting, all the expenditures are on the agenda item also, so people can always see what has been spent and where it was spent. With that, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes and the recommendations. All right. Motion made by Commissioner Dlyden to accept the 
minutes. From I'll second it. All right. There you go. And seconded by Commissioner Batch. Is there any discussion on this? If not, roll call vote. Commissioner um, Burrell, I'll start with you again. <laughs> well, I'll vote aye. Right. Next vote aye. 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 All right. And I took you right to that 10 o'clock time. And we, you're just perfect. Okay, so the minutes from the committee of the whole meeting are approved by nothing. All right. We move on to our 10 o'clock um, public hearing, consideration of the resolution to make the Office of Wright County Auditor Treasurer an appointed position. And I will um, I give a little background or just open it up for public comment background please all right so um, before us is a resolution we um, are have got into discussion a while ago about the fact that Wright County is the 10th largest county in Minnesota and we're continue to grow we have a larger budget we have a larger workforce and we're looking at better ways to serve the needs of our people so we, um, you know, examined different, different um, delivery services and um, kind of just the county-wide better efficiencies. And the auditor treasurer has had a lot of, of extra departments, essentially, you know, put into that department. And we believe that we'd have a more robust financial functions going forward by by having our auditor treasurer do his job as an auditor <laughs> treasurer so um, this is this is where we landed and uh, of course with with Bob's approval and blessing to make move from an elected position to an appointed position and to to um, identify more his core functions of his job. So with that, um, I will open this up for public comment. And I have not received, I had a question about it, but I have not received any, any uh, comments from anyone. Is there anyone rejoining us remotely or in house that would like to make a comment? Is there anyone that would like to make a comment? Is there anyone that would like to make a comment? Hearing not, I will close the public comment and bring it up to the board members. If anyone would like to, to make any comments or um, our auditor treasurer, if you'd like to make any comments. Anyone else? Commissioner, did, did admin receive anything at all? No, I received no comments. Uh, as required by the statute, we had posted this in the official newspaper for two weeks. Uh, I did not receive any uh, written phone or any correspondence regarding this. So, Anyone and other commissioners receive anything? Madam Chair, I did not receive any comments. Um, I've discussed it with a, a few people in my community, uh, and the people that I did on the, have that conversation with were very understanding of the reasoning that we're making this decision. Uh, a lot of it is for the uh, long-term continuity, uh, work efficiencies uh, that come with uh, large counties and needing to make this transition. And with that, Madam Chair, I'm gonna make a motion to approve the resolution to make the Office of the Wright County Auditor Treasurer an appointed position. All right, um, motion made by Commissioner Fett. I'll second it. Seconded by Commissioner Delayden, and we have um, Bob Hevela at the podium. <laughs> hey, uh, good morning again, board, uh, commissioners abroad. Um, I want to echo that I appreciate that you see the importance of keeping an auditor treasurer. Uh, that function is still going to be here at the county. So, and I appreciate what you're doing there. So, yeah. You didn't hear any concerns at all, no. either. No. Yeah. And I, I would have thought that they they would have run directly to you if they had some mm -hmm. major concerns. Yep, so. All right. Thanks, okay. Bob. Good to know. Any other comments? Yes, Madam Chair. Commissioner Potter. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, for, for some people out there, they don't understand why we're doing this. Uh, but we have gotten large enough and the amount of work has, is so diverse that they have to do that it, we're just gotten too big for, 
or to keep it the way the structure was. This is the, the correct way to go forward with it. Uh, also, also the fear with the, when you have an elected position that's so important to the county that somebody with a uh, real common last name might get in and might not have the qualifications and skill set to do that, and that can scare the loving bejeebers out of you. Uh, so it's nice to know that we we get people that actually know what the job is there and have a little bit better control of it. So I, I, I applaud the move. I think it was it, time is right to do this. All right. Thank you. All right. Any more discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner oh, Burrell. Oh, Madam Chair, oh. excuse me, one more thing. Oh. Before the vote and the resolution oh. and the last whereas, it says, uh, whereas the current organization and structure of the Auditor Treasurer's Office and the diversity of the duties, it shouldn't be diverse, diverse duties, not diversity. Doesn't that, doesn't that implicate more social? Yeah, I guess either it could be diverse. You know, because and the diversity of duties. Yeah. I, 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 well, it's either it's it's proper, right? Okay, Believe either way, it'd be fine. I think. So. Okay, because it just it just read different read, to me. Read differently too. That word diversity gets thrown around so much, you kind of want to make sure it's not confused with what what this job actually is. But mm -hmm. I'm okay with it then if you're okay, <laughs> Madam Chair. Yep. All right. Any other discussion? Hearing none. Roll call vote, Commissioner Burrell. Bro, vote aye. Vetch votes aye. 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 All right, resolution passes 5 0. Thanks, everybody. Okay. And then uh, the second item with that is the. Madam Chair, I'm going to make a motion to approve the contract to make the office of the Wright County Auditor Treasurer. Or, or, no, sorry, the next piece is another approval. Approve the contract for the uh, office of the Auditor Treasurer as an appointed position. I'll second it. All right. Motion made to approve the contract to make the. All right. Damn I'm it. sorry, Commissioner Betch Damn and it. second by Commissioner Leiden. Yes. yes. Is there any any discussion on this contract? Hearing no Madam Chair, just so the public understand, this is just the final piece. This is just kind of the formalizing the agreement uh, with the auditor treasurer to make that transition from. Uh, appointed or from elected to appointed yep. so it's just kind of the second step involved with the resolution yep thank you any other discussion hearing none roll call vote commissioner burrell well votes aye Vetch votes aye. aye 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 all right the contract is approved and thank you everyone thank you bob all right items for consideration the second set of of minutes that we have is the Committee of the Whole Board Workshop. Commissioner Potter. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Committee of the Whole met workshop on December 8th, 2020. We had a few agenda items to talk about. The first one being scheduled meetings as needed. We talked about no, uh, the, uh, <coughs> there, there's no board meeting on the 22nd because there's five Tuesdays <coughs> in December. And we had no AMC annual conference this year. To, that usually takes out that fifth one. It's a little different there. Uh, leadership committee, the next leadership committee is for the January 5th, and that will have the new commissioners that are seated in there to help there. With that going, the, uh, the Health and Human Service agenda, we move to, we want to move some items to January. Uh, and Commissioner Burrell does have a, it says he's got a couple meetings scheduled for Monday the 4th, which kind of questions whether he or uh, Commissioner-elect uh, Ketchmark should attend those meetings, so they'll have the determined. Uh, even though uh, Burrell is still officially commissioner until the morning that I, I'm sure you've got that resolved now by now that what's going on with that one the next I, the next <laughs> item was a architect design services for the dental clinic there's a talk with Alan Wilczek about the uh, information regarding the proposed architectural services we had a couple bids uh, one from BKV and uh, one from uh, David Kane uh, the BKV bid was 89,000 and the Kane bid was 120 you know, the community dental prefer to work with Kane because they're used to them, but the, the difference in that amount of money is, is quite drastic. Uh, BKV assured us that they can, this is not going to be that difficult to do. I think they can, they've done fine work out there for us already. I don't think this is going to be uh, uh, beyond their scope of what they can handle. Um, so the 
the, we applied for a grant towards the architectural fees, anticipate $100,000, and we talked about that yesterday. And we, there actually was a grant that we received, so that's kind of the yeah. after, after the fact information, but mm -hmm. it's kind of nice. It's and, very nice. And the, uh, so the, <clears throat> the uh, recommendation there was all in favor of moving forward BKV group for architectural service design for the dental clinic. Uh, the next item was the commissioner's handbook. <clears throat> Kelly stated that the uh, commissioner's handbook throughout the uh, you have a great deal of responsibility involved in a lot of things as we are. Uh, ask commissioners to some tweaks here and there, removing word parentheses, uh, so they go through some information, collaborate some parts. They really this is just housekeeping uh, things here, and just what is the role of a commissioner and a resource to be utilized for us, just to help us in the future. What's going on? It's updated information changes in state statutes, county policies, and it is available on via SharePoint, and each commissioner may request a copy of printed document as well. Um, so the overview is information for accuracy, make sure that the, the committee, owner's committee, the court's facilities remove documents. Um, th things just more, uh, you know, we'd like to see the watershed district advisor present an annual report to the county board, which is kind of nice. Uh, you know, Delight asked if Mr. Asselin, uh, could review the committee to see if it's operating as it should, which that's something we should be doing anyway uh, to make sure it's still doing its purpose. Recommendation there is schedule a committee of the whole to discuss uh, commissioner's handbook in January. After the committee assignments are selected on the 5th, each commissioner can provide input on content of the handbook at that point in time, which is appropriate there. The next item was a CHIPS contract. Uh, we'll present that contract is similar to current contract and will commence on January 1st, 2021, terminate on December 31st, 2023, big change contract is the date that has uh, some added wording to provide clarification. Uh, Ms. Ms. Gabriel will no longer do any appeals, which uh, means the county may be funding these outside of this contract. It's a little different that then more to come on that. We'll have to figure out how that one works. Um, and we've appreciated uh, Ms. Gabriel, Gabriel's uh, presentation uh, before the board. And she's been a strong advocate for those in need of the past. Uh, and Commissioner Burrell asked if uh, Schwartz, Goodman Schwartz or Asselson could have further explain the contract. Uh, Asselson said in 2008, the expense was passed down <coughs> from state to individual counties. Wright County has contracted with Miss Gabriel. Since that time, contract has been successful. Uh, and it is, I've never heard a complaint once the whole time I've been here. So obviously he's doing, doing what we want to. And uh, Asselson said, said she previously did some work for Sherbert County, believes that she has, that has dropped off and she's a private practice for these matters. Recommendation is extend the CHIPS contract with Ms. Gabriel. Next item was the training center walkthrough. We had a presentation from uh, Frank uh, to uh, look <clears throat> at the walkthrough of that video of the public since, it, since we can't do uh, open house per se. Uh, I, I think it was very, very good. I mean, of course, you look at it, it's nothing's the same as, as working through it in person, but that's about as close as we're going to get to a, a, in person at this point in time. Uh, and it's nice to get that video out to the public since it was kind of a controversial project in some people's eyes. And, uh, and I want to thank uh, Frank for getting that video gone. It's the really recommendation nice. post the sheriff's office training video for public viewing. Uh, Commissioner Dyden said he'd looking for clarification uh, regarding the medical clinic for the new government center. Would like a explore, explanation of how these will bring costs down to the county. Uh, Commissioner Vetch explained some dental medical clinic would provide savings to employees and counties. Um, I know we were talking about utilization and other things that, you know, the office visits and it went into detail, which I thought was good discussion on, on some of the metrics on how that actually works. Uh, I thought that was good for if people had listened to that workshop or that these a going to get cheaper, a little cheaper health care, more convenient for employees and everything else. Clinic could also be used for pre-employment physicals as well. The, the clinic was also discussed for several years ago. Anoka County is medical clinic has been discussed and they've had it out there for a long, for quite a while. Uh, may take a while for the clinic to get up and running, but employees will begin taking advantage of it. And then we're looking at potential, you know, savings for us in the, that, uh, in the future. And the, you know, you know, Anoka County is unique in the fact that a health partner is not their provider. They're doing it themselves. But anyway, uh, that was the minutes, and there was a few recommendations there to make a motion to approve those, Madam Chair. All right, motion made by Commissioner Potter to approve the minutes and the recommendation. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Commissioner Delayden. Is there any discussion and any corrections or anything on the minutes? Madam Chair. 
Yes, Commissioner. Uh, just Brian. to compliment uh, uh, Frank again, Peta for his uh, doing of the um, absolutely. Yeah, it was a great job of the video. Yes. So I don't know if we've gotten any compliments or complaints on it or anything, but I thought it was a, it was a unique way to be able to show off. Yes. That facility, mm -hmm. just uh, the way things are, and not be able to open up to the right. public yeah. right now. Yeah, we have to go with the virtual options nowadays, so you did a fine job. <laughs> Some, someday. Yeah, someday. All right. If there's no other discussion, um, roll call vote, Commissioner Burrell. Burrell votes aye. Next votes aye. 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 All right. Minutes and recommendations are approved from the County Board Workshop. All right. Moving right along. Um, we have a resolution setting the county attorney's salary for 2021. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion to set the county attorney's salary uh, as the stated amount. I'll second it. All right. Motion made by Commissioner Beck, seconded by Commissioner Leiden. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Burrell. Well, votes aye. Vets votes aye. 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 All right. The county attorney's um, salary is approved by resolution 5-0. All right. The um, resolution setting the county board salary for 2021. So moved. All right. Motion made by Commissioner Potter. Is there Bra a second? Bra second? All right. Seconded by Commissioner Burrell. Any discussion on this? Yes, Madam Chair. Is it a unique that the two outgoing commissioners? I know. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for approving that. That's great. <laughs> All right. Pardon if there's no other discussion, roll call vote. <laughs> Commissioner Burrell. Burrell votes aye. 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 Resolution passes 5 0. Thank you. Um, the next resolution is for um, auditor treasurer. Setting, yep, setting the auditor treasurer's salary for 2021. So moved. All right, moved by Commissioner Delight. Is there a second? I'll second it. Seconded by Commissioner Vetch. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Burrell. Double votes up. Aye. Vetch votes up. Aye. 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 All right. The auditor treasurer's um, salary is approved 5-0. Uh, the resolution setting the sh sheriff's salary for 2021. So moved. Motion I'll made by it. Commissioner Potter, seconded by Commissioner Delayden. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, Commissioner Burrell. Burrell votes aye. Bench votes aye. 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 All right. The salary, sheriff's salary for 2021 is approved 5-0. All right. The last resolution of the day. <laughs> I see. Uh, Madam Chair, if I could, uh, we're doing a little, di little bit differently this year. Two resolutions being presented, one to set the budget and a second for the property tax levy. So okay. we'll need two motions on that. Yep. So there is, there is uh, two resolutions. Thank you. Um, all right. So the first one is to establish the 2021 budget. I'll make a motion to approve the 2021 budget. All right. Motion made by Commissioner Delighton. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Commissioner Vetch. Any discussion on this? I want to thank everyone for the hard work <laughs> of coming up with this budget. It was, um, it was, I can't say it was tears, but it was a lot of sweat equity went into this and a lot of thought. So I appreciate everyone's everyone's work on this. All right. If there's no more discussion, roll call vote. Commissioner Burrell. No vote aye. Vetch votes aye. 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 All right. Resolution passes to accept the budget 5-0. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution for 2021 property tax levy. All right. Motion made by Commissioner Delighton. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Potter. Any discussion on the levy? Madam Chair. Commissioner Potter. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so the public to understand that the, the tax rate we're at that's part of this whole deal <laughs> 
is essentially the same as it was when we came in office. It is, so, yeah. so all the people that think we've just been spending like crazy, it's essentially the same. There's a, a, a lot of anomalies that happen there. And of course, we always get blamed for when the city or the school district goes up, but that's just nature of the beast here. But uh, just let people know, and I do appreciate all the hard work of all the department heads and everybody else that went through. We're trying to keep this stable. And Commissioner Vetch, we've been working on this to make sure that we'd have that stability instead of these big tsunamis. We just have little, little waves there instead of tsunamis. So it, it's it's a process, and I think it's a templates there for the moving forward, so we can keep this way instead of having to these major uh, shifts again. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Burrell. Burrell votes aye. Next vote aye. 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 All right. The 2021 levy is approved, 5-0. All right. So uh, moving on to G, Commissioner Burrell. Um, Madam Chair, thank you. Um, this is an item that probably would have been on our regular schedule board anyway, but the um, we kind of talked about having a little lighter schedule on the 29th, but I would uh, like to have this item heard yet this year. So I will make a motion to direct staff to put ordinance amendment 20-1 on the December 29th, 2020 agenda. All right. I don't think, do we don't need a motion for that, do we? Well, we could form the, we'll get well, it. Yeah, if you'd like we, to make, yeah, make that we, motion. We, did. We, we would want, I guess it wouldn't need to be a motion per se, uh, Commissioner Delayden, but just so that staff gets directed to do it because they've gotten direction to keep the bud the uh, agenda light. So just to know that we want to hear it, I guess. Okay. I'm okay with it either way. Motion made by yep. Commissioner Burrell. I'll, I'll second it. Second by Commissioner Leiden. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Commissioner Burrell. Burrell votes aye. Next votes aye. 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 All right. Motion. Thank you. It's on the agenda i i uh your your little uh your little pin charlie it makes you look like your hand is raised so but, but it's not by by your initials so on your oh yeah on your that's lapel. right the lapel yeah. pin yeah. lapel pin goes right by your like, trying that to, does look like that i was trying to figure out who had their hand up because it was kind of moving between a couple people on the bottom so charlie All you're right. such a huckster Anyway. I'd say here, I'll, I'll change the uh, background here and see if it'll help. <laughs> All right. So um, moving on to our advisory committee, advisory board updates, Commissioner Burrell. Um, <clears throat> Madam Chair, the only thing that I had, um, we soil water met last night and one of the discussions we had is with the water management task force, which I know Commissioner Vetch and I think Senator Leiden have been involved in. And it's just talk about when the one watershed, one plans, you know, take place, do we continue going with that? Or because we really don't need a water plan because that one watershed, one plans will encompass it. And my, my input was that I think if we can downsize government in some way, we should probably do it. And I think there was some agreement with that on the board, but it's just, it's not going to be coming up for another couple of years anyway, but um, just that's kind of one of the things we talked about. So. All right. Thank you. Anything else, Commissioner Burrell? Um, no, Madam Chair. All right. Commissioner Vetch. Uh, first thing, I'm, uh, Commissioner Burrell, thanks for making that, that statement. As well as we've had a challenging time getting people to serve on that water task force, so I think as that thing moves forward, we're going to have some more discussions on that. Uh, on another note, I want to thank uh, Chief Deputy uh, Auditor Treasurer uh, Tammy Vaith for bringing some information forward regarding some changes in state assessed properties uh, as it pertains to distribution and, and transmission properties uh, as they made uh, language changes or a, I shouldn't say they made language changes, they made a different interpretation of the statute which now has some impact on some of the local school districts and cities in terms of their capacity. Uh, she brought this forward. I am now working with uh, Shane at Flaherty and Hood uh, to get some 
clarification on these changes and what maybe can be done to mitigate that impact of those local communities. So more to come on that. Just wanted you guys to be aware that uh, moving forward with working with Clarity and Hood on it. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Leiden. Um, in the interest of time, uh, the only thing I've got is just that, and you guys, I, I don't know if everybody was involved, but we had the annual mm -hmm. AMC conference on the 7th, which was virtual this year, which was a lot more unique. <coughs> <laughs> didn't um, allow us much interaction with no. our with our counterparts in other counties. So that was kind of just <laughs> along with no additional um, <clears throat> classes and training opportunities. Right. So I, hopefully next year will be better. Yep. Anything else? No. Um, yeah, I appreciated the um, the keynote speaker on Saker. He was just he was very inspirational and um, it. You know that worked fine to have him be virtual, but yeah. as far as the committees and making, you know, voting and everything was a little a lot more difficult. Well, yeah, it just wasn't. It, it's it'll be nice when we can all gather again together. So, well, I had um, a number of, of meetings, and um, of course they're all virtual. But Mita, we got as it was mentioned yesterday that grant and actually um, um, Don Holler put. Put that on the on the front page of our our website too, to have get a hundred twenty five thousand dollar grant for four five years, and um, that's that's going to be really helpful to help get an educator in here to work with the schools and that kind of thing. Um, there talked about the drug national drug take back day, and they actually brought in a hundred and five pounds of meds. So it was it was up from previous years, um, and then there's a question of you know really what what happens to in the destruction of this these meds, but the VA actually pays for destruction in Alexandria two times a year. Um, we normally give out grants to the schools for different presentations, and we have had no requests at this time. Um, sadly, we've had five deaths from overdoses this year and um, Tom Kelly who was our chair for several years has stepped down and and I will be the new chair for Mita next year um, we had the public works labor management and had a lot of updates saw the photos from the shed and and um, they have had a, a pretty good year with no snow to get out and do a lot of the the trail work and that kind of thing. So parks has been busy. Um, so anyway, just um, kind of a some some uh, updates from all the from the three departments. And we had um, a <coughs> community health health services advisory committee. And Harlan is outgoing. He's not running again for as commissioner. So he's been our our chair for the last few years, but he kind of just recapped some of the, the goals and the commitment, the compassion, that kind of thing um, that we've had. We appointed, or excuse me, elected a new chair, Sheila Kiscaden from Olmstead County, and our vice chair is Terrell Clark from, from Stearns County. We also had um, Commissioner Malcolm did um, a presentation and an update on on uh, COVID and the vaccine coming out so that was good and then I had the um, Central Minnesota Jobs and Training board meeting we had our auditor presentation and our audit came in nice and clean and and just talked about some of the challenges of virtual things but they're they are still up and running and and helping people so I've got I've got reports that people can read but you said it's kind of a lot of information I won't won't go into any more detail so Commissioner Potter uh, thank you madam chair uh, the only committee after report is the highway 55 corridor coalition had a full membership meeting Friday December 11th uh, there was quite a few people on on the uh, zoom or whatever you want to call that uh, meeting here uh, and 
went through some of the things where we first off we elected a new chair for next year because I will no longer be there. Marvin Johnson, Vice Chair Commissioner Hewson, and Secretary Treasurer uh, will be uh, Mayor Cook. We got some updates from uh, MnDOT. There wasn't a lot, but just a few things about the three hundred million dollars in trunk highway bonds that have been approved. Um, uh, you say we just got to figure out how to access that. We a uh, couple, nothing really matter. The federal update was basically they extended the FAST Act by one year, which is still, hopefully they keep working on that when they first get back after the holidays and make that for like a five-year appropriation so we can, people can plan. Because right now for a one year, you're, you're going to be tough to get those things. <clears throat> uh, we, we did talk about some of the uh, things when uh, Minnesota had build grant and we didn't uh, get a, uh, a follow-up. Afterwards, you know, a debriefing, uh, MnDOT, uh, federal, federal uh, is, is changing that a little bit. We got an abridged one for 94, but they're going to change that policy to make it so if you apply for these funds, you don't get it. You get a full debriefing on how to make your application better in the future. Hopefully that comes to fruition. <clears throat> there are uh, a couple of things we talked about. The Transportation Alliance, uh, the fly-in, which I, had, I attended. Uh, this was a, uh, a virtual one, which is different than, than usual. Um, that was a uh, September 22nd through the 24th. Uh, I did get a lot of uh, FaceTime on on, uh, <clears throat> on Zoom with uh, Commissioner Margaret Anderson Kelleher to talk about different items in, in relationship to transportation. Uh, hopefully some of it comes to fruition, but she has not called or emailed back, so it's hard to say we're going to keep getting on her, her case about different things. But we um, talked about different things coming up in uh, – this one of Commissioner Vetch, she'll be happy with this. We did talk about some changes to the uh, NEPA process uh, and uh, keep on uh, Congressman Emmer because he was running with it a little bit. So we need to keep on this because it's important for us in the future. And it'll be important for any other thing because when 55 gets passed, Loretto goes down by Lake Sarah, we'll probably be dealing with that process again, even though it's not a river crossing, but they'll Anytime you get close to something, it gets sensitive. But, and I want to say, before I go on up this, I'm going to get off my soapbox pretty quick on this one. Transportation Alliance, and I got this heard from you again, has nothing to do with the Met Council. This is a the transportation lobbying organization. It has nothing to do, no ties, no correlation with the Met Council. And, you know, and a couple people still got that in their head that that's Met Council, which is not. Uh, other things we talked about is, is the... Um, 55, uh, the funding memo, the different uh, funding memo chances here. Um, there, there are various degrees of, of uh, chance of us getting it, and they all have different uh, price points to them. We're just going to keep working on that because, as you know, from Arrowhead to Loretto was our next proposed uh, thing. We needed $4.5 million to get the, the planning preliminary final design, and right away to get that started, that makes it, shovel ready for any federal or other money that's come there. Uh, we're disappointed that we didn't get the uh, final design and right away to get that started. Sorry. That makes it shovel we, ready we're disappointed that we didn't get the uh, money out of the bonding bill. Uh, it kind of got lost the, uh, in the uh, shuffle, right which is it's, it's too bad. Uh, Highway 55 is eligible for quarters of commerce money, although because it's in the metro and they have some major projects down there, there's no way it's going to score high enough to get that, although I did make thanks to uh, former Representative uh, Fitzsimmons for including 55 on that. So if, if, say, some money actually comes available, one project comes in under, and there's, we just happen to be in that sweet spot to get some of that money, it is eligible for that. So hopefully that works. Um, but that's a, that's a long shot. The other thing is who uh, ends up staying on the corridor coalition for next year besides Commissioner Hewson. Um, they need to be in touch with uh, Commissioner Fernando from Hennepin County because there's a 55 coalition from 169 into the metro. We want to make sure we're, we're working in tandem with them so what we're doing doesn't conflict with what they're doing and vice versa. Uh, so it's, it's kind of nice with the, we, we've got this in Janet Cleverin from Plymouth uh, trying to get this, this next step going. Uh, it took a long time to get uh, Metro MnDOT, Met Council, Hennepin County, and we got Plymouth back in the fold to get this moving forward. Uh, I, I believe it's it's in the right direction. It's, it's sad that I won't be able to make that last little push there, but hopefully it'll go forward. And uh, keep in mind that roads are not Republican or Democrat; they're people. Uh, so it's just at that. So we did they did the budget and the dues proposed. They they all got a, approved. Um, 
The uh, other thing is the next membership meeting is, is April 9th at 9.30. And then August 13th, the middle one is always subject to if something happens, and December 10th of 2021. And, and uh, it's been a pleasure, you know, it's been fun working on that committee with everything else. Uh, and uh, that's all I have, Madam Chair. Yeah, you've been a very important member of that committee because you are, you are Mr. Transportation, for yeah. sure. Yes, <coughs> Madam Chair. Yes. Commissioner Potter has done a, a fantastic job for the residents of Red County when it roads. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's getting compliments from, from higher ups than yeah. we are <laughs> about his, his fine work and, and, you know, things, projects that would not have happened. State, state officials have recognized that because of your efforts. We, so we appreciate it. We sure do. That was yep. one of my goals and missions coming on this yep. board in the first place is to get Wright County at the table instead of on the menu. Yep. And I, you know, people, when they finally hear that enough times, they finally understand <laughs> what that means. <laughs> I mean, we pay in, we want some back, and we got the growth coming here. Yep. Okay, it's yep. not stopping. It's not stopping, so appreciate that. Administrator Kelly. Uh, thank you. Uh, you may have heard there's uh, a economic development or economic stimulus package that uh, has passed the House and Senate and it's going to the governor's desk. Yep. Uh, expected to be signed. So keeping tabs on that as there is a county bucket of funds associated with that. Uh, so that'll be a minimum of uh, $256,000. Uh, ours, being a larger county, will fall into the per capita. So uh, be almost like another set of cares. So anticipate if that gets signed, we'll have more discussions along that route. So, yeah. so, news. yeah, good yeah, news. It sounds like that's exclusively for us to provide to small businesses. Yeah, there's some criteria to it, but it's fairly well left open where the counties can make decisions to target it as we see fit. So, uh, more with that. Otherwise, it's a very busy week uh, doing interviews and. Uh, working through end of year stuff and preparing as uh, we have two new commissioners coming on board and a new county attorney taking office so it's kind of hard to believe on. that <laughs> it's december 15th already somehow yes. somehow uh, even with all the stuff going on with covid the year passed really quickly so yes it did. all right well if there is nothing else to come before the board we are adjourned at 10 37. happy merry christmas everyone more days and Santa will be at Greg's house. <laughs>